of the lightning tree. This living's all torn from the day it was born, for the tree was born in a thunderstorm. Grow, grow the lightning tree, it's never too late for you and me. Grow, grow the lightning tree, never give up. with that now. Have you fed him? Yeah. Good. Well, go in and get your breakfast. Oh, can't I take you to the car? You know you can't manage that by yourself. Now go along in. Go on. Where's Mum? Mucking out Sandy. Blasted animal. More trouble than he's worth. Mum? Yes? Where's me shoes? Coming. It's all for me? No. Here, you've chipped some. No, I don't want any. You'll have to hitch Sandy up yourself. Chip can't manage him and he's too much for me. Damn animal. No, no. Now. Served your father well enough, God rest his soul. Yeah, but that's over. We don't need him anymore. So what do we do? We throw him on the scrap heap? That place we was talking about, they'd take him. No! For heaven's sake, Mum don't want him, and I don't want him. You're the only one. But Dad wouldn't want us to take him. But Dad ain't here. I can look after him. I used to help Dad. You're a good lad. But I don't want to see him go. I want Sandy here with us. Have you taken that flooring up to Winchester's yet? He called again, you know. I know, Mum. He told me. He'll have it today. Here's your boots. I cleaned them. Oh, well, he'll be glad of that. He's been waiting a long time. Miserable old grumbler. Ah, uh, uh, He was very good to your father. I know, Mum. He'll have it today. I told you. Shouting. What? Oh, well, when you call, well, what do you say? Oh, firewood timber. Oh, that's good. That's nice. I like those old street cries. I knew your dad, you know. Uh, sorry he's gone. Recognize his cry anywhere. The beauty it was. You could hear it a mile off. You going to carry on the business? Well, I don't know. I suppose so. Look, I could do a nice little story on you, uh, taking over from your dad, following in the family tradition and all that. Would you call in on the office on the way back? Uh, well, talk it over at any road. Well, and we'd pay you. And not much, of course, but uh, two quid. But you wouldn't mind, would you? Your picture in the paper and Sandy here. And it'd be good for business, a bit of publicity. Okay? All right, then, on your way back. Off you go, then. Come on, let's hear you. Shout! Timber! Come on! Timber!
Try jumping him. That'll be the day, won't it, boy? Go on, boy. Go on, show us all. Come on, Weaver. You just show him. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you just show him, Weaver. Go on. Come on. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> oh. Hey, who's that? Oh, it's okay. Ron and Sugger can see what they want. Oh, see, look at all the horses. They all look unhappy to me. What? It's so silly. How do you know? I just do. It's like prison. Oh, don't be upset. Oh, hello, Mrs. Hello, young'un. Um, well, my name's Mrs. Willems. We were told to come here. Was you? Well, this ain't no tourist attraction as far as I know. Oh, no, I mean, you see, we've got this, um, this old horse, Sandy. Well, my husband's just died. Oh, uh, blimey. Oh, I'm sorry. Colonel, shot! Well, you better come in then. Oh, look, and you go and look at the horses. Horrible, great things. All right. I'll come and get you one of them, eh? picture of that boy and that horse. You him? Yeah. Who is he? The son of the fireman who died. I've got an idea for a nice little story. Come on. I hope. What do you mean? Look, mate, we got more than we can cope with already. We can't take any more. Yeah, we got one, Sandy. Your mum wants to bring him here. Oh. Listen, son. Don't let her. It's too cruel. I don't think I could bear it. He whips them, you know. Oh, yeah. And starves them. Hates them, he does. He gets his pleasure out of being cruel like a... A torturer. I've seen him. His face. Oh, you want to see it. It's all screwed up and horrible, clutching his whip in his hand, and sometimes. Oh. What? Cat of nine tails. Do you know about them things? For torturing. <laughs> First his dad, then his horse. Yeah. It's a good story. Not with us to blame it, isn't it? We should do something about it, really. 
have something to help. Yeah, why not? Why don't we run a sob story? Boy loses dad, his friend, his horse, and his job. The examiner comes to his rescue. Help this poor boy on his feet again. Hmm. The examiner finds a horse for a boy who's lost his only friend. How much would it cost? A new horse? Oh, not much. 50, 70, something like that. We can start a contribution fund. Subscription. All the readers send in their shillings to help a sad-eyed boy start life again. Yeah, I can say it now. Come on. You think it'll work? I'm sure it will. Come on. Then, eh? Front page and all. Appeal? What's the appeal for? A new horse. They're getting us another one. Another one? We don't want another horse. We didn't even want Sunday. No, this is different. We might get a good one. But what do we... We don't want one. Oh, my goodness. What are they going to do with it? We can't even afford to keep it. We will with that. We'll get more business, you see. People are soft-hearted. I've lost. The only true friend I had. Now I'll have to get a barrow and push the wood around myself. Did you say that? Well, yeah, something like that. Oh, how could you? That, that, that's just a pack of lies. But where's the harm? We get a horse, they get Sandy off their conscience, business will improve, so everybody's happy. Oh, I don't know. If only a father was still alive. Then, when it's all died down, we'll get rid of the thing. Like you were getting rid of Sandy up at that home place. What's wrong with that? Don't worry, Mum. I know what I'm doing. It's not the old horse I want. Any more than you do. It's the other things. Not being a nobody in this town. People coming to us for their timber. Being able to tell Winchester to go jump in a lake. That's what I want. The horse? Who wants a horse? Crony old nag, they found for him too. I can't see him pulling a cart anywhere, let alone bringing happiness to a local boy. <laughs> Look at this. The examiner helps to wipe away the tears. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Money pouring into this wretched newspaper office. People sobbing over a cooked up story. And probably they've got a dog chained up at home and starved of affection. But this one's deserving. I mean, he needed the horse. Needed it? Needed it nothing. He didn't even want it. I had his mother up here a couple of weeks ago trying to get rid of a horse. Why they have to give him another one, heaven only knows. And where's all this extra trade we've heard so much about? I've seen none of it. Oh, give over, Mum. How was I to know? All that's come out of this is, is just a broken down old horse that your father wouldn't have given house room to. All right, leave it. It can't pull the cart or nothing. I don't know what they were up to, buying a thing like that. Where are you going? Out. Yes. Well, don't expect me to look after your horse. I've got enough to do. I'll look after the horse. Oh, now, Jip, don't you start. But so well, I know how. Look, I know you would if you could, love, but you don't know anything about it. I do. 
Now, Chip, don't argue. You've never had to look after a horse. I looked after Dad. And you're not going to start now. We'll just get rid of it before we get too fond of it, right? No. Chip! No, oh, no! Whatever's the matter, love? Don't send him to that place, Mum. Oh, oh, but it's nice. It isn't. It isn't. They're cruel. They'll beat him. Don't be so silly. They will. I know they will. You're just being silly. It's the best thing for him, that place. They know how to look after horses there. That's their job. Now, come on. Come back inside. Oh, well. Very fair. Keep me yours. What are we going to do? No one loves you, except me. Come in. Eve, Dora, that 
damn newspaper horse has run off and the little boy with it. Please say he's heading this way. Get your horses. Go by the ridge. to send him to the colonel's place, you know, pot... Oh, uh, folly foot only, uh, well, Jip got so upset, so we didn't. Of course not, they're, they're inseparable, real pals. Well... Of course they are, saved the boy's life, didn't he? Examiner's gift horse saves boy's life. It's a great story, eh, colonel? <laughs> Look, he's thin and in poor condition. His coat is dull, his hoof needs seeing to. He really does need care. How much would it cost? But why don't you let us take him? Look, I'll talk to him. But the horse saved the boy's life. Oh, look, he did what any tired horse would do. He stood still on a hill because he didn't want to go any further. The police would never have found the boy if it hadn't been for the horse. And he wanted him to suffer for that. But he won't suffer. I can look after him. Look, Jip. He's not in any condition. But what do you expect them to do if they haven't the money? Then you shouldn't have given them a horse. It's been the best story for years. Marvelous stuff. Well, you've had your money's worth. Look, listen, Jim. We can feed him properly. Give him nice hay, lots of horse nuts, fields for him to run in. And look, you can come and see him any time you want to, just to see that he's all right. And then there's Dora and Steve. They know Hello. all about... Whoa. Thank you. What the... Great, great. Humane Colonel befriends horse lover. Uh, we'll get a oh. shot of the Colonel and the horse, Eddie. What's the use? You're impossible. Well, thanks very much for trying anyway, sir. Oh, we'll manage. Will you? Here they are at last, Jackie and Friend, with the Aussie Ostrich Video Show, right after this. And at six tonight, Happy Days relives all the fun of the 50s. Fonzie's out of town and leaves his girlfriend in Richie's care. Uh-oh, sounds like a recipe for trouble on Happy Days. Six o'clock tonight, when the laughter's all online. Please come to if you want them to, if you want them to, then it's up to you. Grow, grow, the light will change.